There we go. Oh heck everybody, we're off to a weird start tonight. First off, I started talking and I didn't realize that my mic wasn't working, so that's great. On top of that, I think the evil overlords took Paul captive, because he said he's not feeling well and will be in late. So thank you for waiting. We're gonna... I'm gonna try my best uh, to make the show happen in a good way, just by myself, until he escapes from whatever hell he is trapped in. No, Paul! It's, it's very true, yes. Uh, so let's hope that the uh, evil overlords just get out of his junk or whatever other body parts and, and release him. In, in the meantime, uh, I'm going to get us started. I'll, I'll, buy, I'll buy my lonesome. Hope you don't get too bored of my voice because you're going to be hearing a bit more of it. So, as you may be aware, it is uh, Love Your Library Month, and of course I, I clicked the wrong one. Here we go. Well, you know what? I'm just going to click... I'm, you know what? This is an off-shell. I'm just going to keep saying that. So we're going to start with... Because it's Love Your Library Month, we're, we're going to do a Shannon McGillis special. Shannon McGillis is an extremely prolific. Prolific to the point of it being somewhat dubious like we, nobody knows how she gets everything done but she is an extremely pro prolific romance novel author so because it's love your library month i thought you know the evil overlords said hey how about you do um a romance novel to wrap it up because we're actually going to be skipping next week so this is our last love your library month show so <sighs> Time to get another entry into the Shannon McGillis canon. Now, let us see. All right, all right, Shannon, you can you can you can hang out for like thirty more seconds until we get this started up. So, <clears throat> okay, now now you can go away. Sure. Okay. So we're going to start with what our protagonist is like, and we're definitely going to draw with something that's an actual pencil. So, thin. Graceful. Barista. Alright, I already have something in mind when I hear thin and graceful barista. I'm thinking, uh, maybe a, a ballet dancer whose day job is, uh, working as barista, which seems pretty typical, you know, slightly more modern than what I would expect from a Shannon McGillis special. But uh, entirely within keeping of her oeuvre. Okay, no, we're good. Okay. So we're gonna do an unrealistic pose for someone who's a barista, but maybe something that's mildly realistic if you're a ballerina and a barista. her do a ballet pose. I don't know what the different stances are or anything. I know what a plie is and that's about it. And I'm gonna assume the protagonist is cishet female because they usually are. Unfortunately she is very heteronormative. Thin, thin ballerina. And I gotta not bend that 
ankle. It's got to be nice and straight. Here we go. Oh, well, let me see. Let me see this. Is this a Paul? I might be hearing a Paul. I don't know. Well, I can't hear anything. Paul, can you hear me at all? Okay, now I can hear Paul, and so Paul is going to be piped in. Here we go. Paul, can you say hi to people and let them know that you oh, are- Hello, everyone. I'm here. Yeah, you you were finally released from the death grip of the evil overlords. I'm glad that yes. you're, you're, you're out. We've been, uh, I think, too successful lately in their having, you know, just trying to come up with excuses or something to not not provide that funding anything yeah. they can do any they, they they're extremely underhanded yeah and i don't appreciate it it's it's very rude and so i'm, I'm glad to see that you're here i got started on the shannon mcgillis uh special here because uh it's love your library month it's it's the last show of love your library month and so they said hey you need to make a uh romance novel a Shannon McGillis special. Uh, exactly. Yeah, why not have... Why not finish Love Your Library Month with some love? Yes, exactly. That you can find at your library. And you can also express to your library. But this, uh, so far, this does not seem to be about a library. But... No, I, I'm seeing a thin, graceful barista. Yeah, so I, I determined that, that, bar that barista is her day job. But she's actually, like, her dream is to be a ballerina. Ah, uh, there's definitely that dancer stance going. Yeah, I'm trying my best with it. So I'm gonna, since we start a little bit late, uh, we're gonna... No, ah, no! Everything's moving. There we go, okay. Needed to give it some more space for that there lag. Um, to start a little bit later, I'm going to try to do a really quick sketch. No and normally, I would we would try to do the character sketch separately before we started uh, doing the uh, the cover. But I'm going to try to incorporate this into the cover. Now I do see that some art does seem to be happening somewhere. All right. Yes, I am. Doing art. All right, so we're gonna incorporate this into the cover. I think so. I think to keep keep this efficient as possible because, you know, they they held you captive for longer than, than well, I mean anybody would like, but certainly longer than you would like. This is true. true. So, let me uh, let me, let me cue up the. Uh, let's go with uh, let's go with some tropes. How about that? We'll get some tropes some thrown tropes. in there, and we can we can start filling in the cover. Oh, this has already got some magical realism in there because this it's got a familiar slash guardian. Okay. So it's got some some magic in there, and then because this is a romance novel, we're going to we're going to give a job to the beloved. Are we thinking about a swan for the familiar, a la swan, like... I like it. I think that's, I think that's good. And... So let's see, let's see, maybe let me do a personality trait for the, uh... Oh wow. Yandere. Ooh, what's that mean? So... It is a Japanese term, which which means um, it's usually a character that's like very shy and withdrawn, um, and needs to come out of their shell. 
Interesting. Uh, and it's I think it's called um, yandere after like meaning to shrug, meaning like they shrug away um, affection. So, and I keep getting race car driver. So I'm, I think <laughs> the the beloved's gonna be a yandere of race car driver, which I hmm, this is certainly a, a unique mix here. Real unique here. Driver, I I hmm. This is gonna take some uh, some some finagling, but let me let me get a graceful barista in here. So I'm already thinking that it's like a contemporary, mildly uh, mildly magical setting she is her dream is to be a professional ballet dancer and of course the the swan uh, is there to help her with that I'm giving the swan sort of a disapproving stance I noticed. Because, uh, that's some stern crossed arms right there. Her crossed that's, uh, wings. Yes. I believe swans do have the reputation of being uh, d-bags. I have heard uh, that as well. Uh, that they are kind of jerks. I think that this leg needs to be a little bit further up. I'm used to giving people martial arts stances. I'm not. I have to like really. Go, go dancing stances are a little bit different. They're a bit more intense. A bit more extreme. So I'm thinking the race car driver definitely met the barista slash ballerina at her job. At her at yes. her day job. I'm thinking maybe down on his luck, race car driver, disillusioned, doesn't have any passion. But, like, manic pixie dream girl style meets this, this barista who, you know, dances all over the place at the, at the coffee shop. It's kind of like they're... She's, she's known for it. Yeah. And, you know, the, that's... Yeah, she... When people are, uh, stay there and, you know, eat on premises, she will give them their, you know, caramel macchiato or what the, whatever the heck, and, and will ballet dance it over to them. And, you know, she, she gets good tips because of it. Let's, let's do some... Do some more layering in here. Now, where does the swan come from? How did she... Where does the swan come from? Where does the swan- I, um, an egg, I presume? An egg. Um... Maybe, um... It's like, just- just a family... Sw swan? Okay. Like, it's- it's- it's the family... Uh, guardian, or, you know, they- they get one. Each generation gets their own... Like, special spirit guardian. You know, maybe this was, you know, a grandparent or great-grandparent 
once upon a time. Oh, yeah, I kind of like that. Maybe it's a relative. Mm -hmm. And that might be why. We do not approve of this race car life. It's like this yandere person had better prove themselves. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, it's like he's clearly not interested based on his his behavior, even though that's just his behavior because he's he's super like shy and anxious and not feeling confident anymore. You know, they the, these two can definitely both relate to like, you know, the joy of having people cheer and applaud. But uh, you know, he was I guess I guess the maybe he maybe the uh, the race car driver had a uh, I don't know, a bad press incident or something, and that's why he's become super withdrawn. Yeah. He's doubting his whole career. Mm hmm He's doubting everything about himself. Mm hmm And that's why uh, he is taken aback by the fact that this, this person feels so much joy about, you know, her job, uh, about her, about her, about being a ballerista. A ballerista. <laughs> I love it. You know what I don't love mm. is how challenging this swan face is. I will be perfectly honest, I have a swan <laughs> here pulled up on my phone. Yeah. <laughs> We've got this weird lumpy... Okay, that's sort of a good shape. It's just weird. thinking that she's 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 one of those people who wears leggings all the time but I don't find it annoying because that's just kind of how she is in like a court mm -hmm. you know it's, it's part of her her shtick of practicing ballet all the time is that she has to be dressed for the occasion. And you know what? I can't get arm right. <laughs> I'm not arming right here, apparently. <laughs> it might be because it goes slightly off, off canvas. Oh yeah. See it? That's that's a that is a decided improvement. See, you got it. I have faith in you. You escaped <laughs> the <laughs> the evil overlords. You can escape the grasp of having a a weird looking <laughs> <laughs> weird looking swan. Back and more powerful than ever. Yes. <laughs> I guess before I start, start a little sketch of the of So I'm, I'm trying to think. Oh, let's go a little bit further up. I'm, I'm trying to think that uh, you, if, if her whole thing is being a manic pixie dream girl and showing him, you know, the joy of just loving something for the sake of loving it, then what does she get out of bringing him out of his shell? What does he bring to the table? 
And this can also be something that her, her, her duck spirit grandpa definitely brings up. That's a good point, yeah. What is she really getting in this relationship? Maybe So my, my my closest idea was that she loves this, she does it all the time, but she has she similarly has no confidence. So she's just like, oh well I'll never make it big. I'm trying to make the best of what I have. Like she underestimates herself. You know, she's kind of concluded that she'll just always be a novelty and that she'll never actually get anywhere in life. And she's like, no, it's fine. And he's like, but you could dream bigger. And you've taught me that. You know, I forgot that I could dream. And so don't forget to dream for yourself as well. That sounds like something he would say. <laughs> it's kind of like a, a mutual mm -hmm. uh, encouragement. Yeah. Yeah, they... They see in others what they do not see in themselves. It's like... I'm not gonna bribe you. So it certainly seems like a weird match of being like, why does this Formula One racer, uh, you know, have a, what does the, what does a Formula One racer have anything to do with the ballerina slash barista? You know, some people are like, well, this is a weird match, Shannon McGillis, but I mean, she she does she's she's got to crank these out. He writes. A lot. Yes. Of books. I mean, it's, it's, this has got to be like the third or fourth one that's come out this month. And she's trying to stay unique. But I think this is part of the, the, the like the, uh, the, the hometown series. So like he's going back to his hometown. In meeting the in meeting this woman, who has never left, she has stayed there her whole life. Yeah, maybe he's on like a, I don't know if race car drivers can be suspended or something. But I'm pretty sure they can be. Uh, like be he's kind of leaking. I think I think it's completely fair that he could be he could be, have a suspension. You know, especially if it came from. Maybe having an outburst to the press. He had like a panic attack. Mm-hmm. And it just, you know, they all they did was play the clip over and over and over again, completely taking it out of context. And as a, you know, a fellow live performer, she she's like, hey, it's all about being in the moment. You know, don't worry so much about what other people think about you. Which is funny, because she worries what other people will think about her, and she assumes that she knows what, th what they think about her. It's easier said than done. Mm -hmm. Easier advice to give than to take. Mm -hmm. Which I totally get. <laughs> IRL. Oh yeah, certainly, you know. D do as... Do as I say, not as I do, that kind of situation. Mm -hmm. She's kind of 
got like a double tank top thing going on because she's got the apron as well. Double tank. <laughs> By the way, I don't know if you saw in the chat, but uh, OP20XDX in the uh, in the chat said that he was digging the music and said it was very awesome knots-ish. Oh yeah? Well, I'm glad to hear it. I made it. <laughs> yes, he, yes, you did. Uh, I... For next time, for next Stump the Artist, I should have it up on my SoundCloud so y'all can download it. Mm -hmm. And listen to it in its entire context with, without, without us talking over it. <laughs> yeah. The swans, the swans' jo job is to make the the dreams in the family come true, and so maybe part of it is helping the race car driver find find his own guardian to make his family's dream come true, or his dream come true. Because in this universe, everybody has, uh, you know, a special guardian angel familiar to help them on their in their life path but you know you you lose track of it you d become disconnected from it and sometimes you just gotta find that again yeah it, it's it's a uh, symbolism he's lost his his uh His hope, his sense of purpose in life, his raison d'etre. Wow, that's another big one that I. Deal with. I mean, I well, I even said it, said it wrong, but it's a raison d'etre, which is French for reason for being. So it's that's it just means like you know the purpose of existence. This is a vaguely educational show as well. Okay. Because I fail to realize how many weird words and facts that I know until Paul goes, I don't know what that means. <laughs> yep, at the very least, if the audience isn't learning, I'm learning. <laughs> at the, if I can be the catalyst for some education, then I'm totally fine with that. And so, you know, g grandfather. Uh, Grandfather Swan it's like look you know I, I remember when you were a kid and I, I, I didn't have feathers and I remember you were talking about how you wanted to 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 you know lead in the New York ballet what are you what are you doing you're why are you wasting your time with this guy why are you wasting your time around here you should be practicing more So he doesn't. He doesn't get it. He doesn't get it. There's also love is also important. Love is also important, and so is you know, uh, you know, help helping to support the rest of the family, the ones who aren't um, somewhat incorporeal swans. Because I, I bet that she's got, uh, you know, a sibling. Or uh, a parent who was ill that she has to support, and that's part of the reason why she never moved away from that town. Is that she, she's just like, no, I'll just be, I'll just be a barista. And you know, s s she got written up in the press and in the local newspaper as a ballerista, and she's like, yeah, I can be that. I don't need to be anything else. And while that, you know, some of that. Contentment is to be admired. It's also, you know, limiting. 
do have to dream a bit. There's, there's, you can be selfless if, if you, if, you know, to a certain extent, but you, you got it's, you know, it, I guess it's just the, the, the lesson which Shannon McGillis says very pedantically at some point, which is, it's not an either-or decision. You can have both if you try. Swan logo on the cup, although it kind of looks like a flower, but that's fine. <laughs> it's open for interpretation. Mm -hmm. I'm really digging that swan face now. I think you did a really good job with it. <laughs> <laughs> it uh, worked out. It worked out in the end. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm gonna go back. To, that, yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna go back to our sketch layer and get some, uh, some maybe background stuff going on. Try to get some of this, this setting. Just, we'll just say that's the counter. And then some nice windows in the back. Then probably one of those chalkboard signs that, or you know. Say with the specials. The specials. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna really save time and make these extremely simple chairs. <laughs> <laughs> Chairs aren't the main character. No, they are not. This is this is all background. This is not meant to you know, be be a major part of the scene. You know, we can we can really cheat by also just not having not having distinct people in these chairs. Some filthy, filthy sketches. <laughs> Suddenly the, this, that table's very, very short. Filthy sketches of some... <laughs> some filthy customers? I don't know. <laughs> There's al there's always one. There's always at least one. Vegas to trees. In fact, I'm not even gonna bother with that. <laughs> what am I doing? Adding in more work. We got 15 minutes to go. <laughs> <laughs> Those overlords are counting. Such oh, overachievers. Gosh, man. And you know what? They're not wrong. 
That's part of the reason why they picked us is because they know we'll go, we'll go too hard if we're if we're you know left to our own devices. thinking the title's got to be something maybe related to caffeine. Caffeine and dancing and speed. Yeah. And also, do we have names for these characters? We do not, although my brain... I know that's not one of our strong points, but... Yes. I was thinking, I, uh, when, when I heard Racer, I thought Chet. Chet seems like a very plausible Formula One racer name. What do you think? Chet and Isabel. There, I did it. <laughs> Was, honestly, that's crazy. I had Chet in my mind. That's right, we have elliptical tool. Yes! I can make even less effort. Well, I mean, then clearly we, we had a. It's Destiny. And we had yeah. a mind meld there. Chet, it is. Chet and Isabel? Yes, Chet and Isabel. Or, you know, Izzy, because she's quirky. Love it. Love it. Home? Sure can. All right. <laughs> I know. I'll put them in the sketch layer. There we go. Friends, save time if you have, if you can. <laughs> find find shortcuts if you can. Yeah, y'all. We're on this earth for only a limited amount of time you know i'm not saying like cheat all the time or anything but you know if you if you're working for some evil overlords and you're on a timeline it's okay to find some tools which are readily available to you and use them to your advantage not cheating if the tools are already there that's it's just right. being resourceful yes oops Oh, you know what? I bet the press said, like, they saw that he didn't have his special dream guardian there, and they're like, you don't even want to be here, do you? And he started, like, yelling, like, of course I want to be here. This is this is my dream. And, you know, became really upset and, he, and then said the usual bad phrase, which is, you don't know me. And so they just played that over and over and over again. It became a meme for a while. Yeah, I don't even know myself. Yeah, these are different size tables. Be quiet. <laughs> I like that that Chad came into the coffee shop in in one of his racing suits. Or maybe it's just the jacket, I can't tell right now. Paul, I'm getting to suspect that you might be muted. <laughs> Uh-oh. Vanished on me. 
friends, we're having a night. <laughs> I think his computer might have frozen. Evil overlords got- they heard us talking stuff, and they got to us. Oof. No, no, he's still drawn. So he just got booted from the call. Here. I don't know what happened. You dropped away off the face of the earth. They keep they, they keep coming for you. They can't stop us. It's not gonna happen. We just want that library funding. That's it. I'm not asking for world peace over here. They can try and tear us apart. It's not gonna stop us from creating. Mm-hmm. You hear? Oh yeah, I hear. Chet and Izzy are still gonna get together. Mm -hmm. They're gonna dance, they're gonna drive. Mm-hmm. And they pawns. You know, they're gonna they're gonna discover the confidence that they had in themselves. He's gonna find out what his his you know, his spirit animal guardian form person is. It's probably going to be something, either like a fast bird or like a jackrabbit or something. Well, something speed related. So something speed related. But what I was saying, probably to myself, mm -hmm. uh, was that this is going to be a tough one to name. It really is. Swan and the Speedster. Race, race and grace. Race and grace. Race, race and grace. Graceful racing. Graceful. Graceful. Oh, buddy, buddy, buddy. <laughs> race for grace. Ra race for grace, sure. Oh, that's a horrifying looking shape. Chasing the dream. Ooh, I like that because that's what they're doing. That's what they're doing. Chasing the dream. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. We got I think it. That's good. We got it. it just took us took us a little bit. We got it. We could also change his name to 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 
you know, chase. So it'd be chase and the dream. <laughs> chase and the dream. That's not bad either. Mm -hmm. But I still feel like this is a very Chet kind of guy. He's, yeah. Ch yeah, even for Shannon McGillis, mm -hmm. ch Chase as a race car driver is a little on the nose. Mm -hmm. Some vague. You can put some vague trees there. We can do Ooh, some. some pull out the vague trees. Yeah. After all. Put in some vague human bodies that look kind of horrifying. Now that I'm putting them in. <laughs> <laughs> I've just drawn in the back and looks like they're synced. Like, I need those photos! Slam on the table. Get me Spider Man! Get me Spider Man! That's exactly what I was thinking. <laughs> He's a menace! Yeah, these, these people don't, don't matter, so you don't need to put a whole lot of work into them. Shrubbery. Big shrubbery, yeah. Big shrubbery, yeah. Soaked. Swan art. Really, they do look like horrifying shadow demons. Not that I've put a couple in. <laughs> Don't tell anyone. Looks like a spite tonight's setbacks. Yeah, I think we yeah, I mean, right. it, it was it was a certainly a messy night, but I think the concept came together uh, relatively uh, relatively easily. Like not too bad, all things considered. Chasing the Dream, Shannon McGillis novel, Isabella, Grandfather Swan, Chet, finding themselves, 
finding each other. And finding what they've actually been uh, chasing all their lives. sell a million copies. Uh, I mean, it's probably, it's already sold at least 500,000. Like, just in pre-orders. <sighs> Alright. I think, I think we did pretty well. And you know what? We're right on time. Paul, well, we, they really tried today. They've really they tried, tried their to, hardest. They've really we tried, tried harder. Oh yeah, they really tried to stump us hard. I think we just made it under the wire. We're gonna we're gonna take a photo of this thing. See, we did the thing for Love, Love Your Library Month. We got a new Shannon McGillis romance novel for you. You're welcome. Freaking welcome. So, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling, I'm feeling okay. Paul, you feeling okay? I'm feeling okay. I'm feeling okay. All right. So, I'm gonna say, uh, I think, I think we got it. I think we, we narrowly escaped being, being uh, stomped. We made it. So, we'll say thank you for watching and for joining us, and for being patient with us. This weird show beset by foibles and machinations of the evil overlords. I will remind you, we are uh, not going to be here next week, uh, but do. You have seven days to donate to Moon Library at uh, loveyourlibrary.org. And thanks to the Jack Buncher Foundation, it will be matched. So please, please do so. We, we can only do so much to release the funding from the evil overlords by bending to their every whim, including when they are tormenting us. So, please donate. Love your library. Paul? Well, don't know if Paul's talking yet, but yeah. there he is. <laughs> woo! Woo. He said, he said woo. Uh, have, have a good... Have a good evening, have a good rest of your September. That well, goes for all of you. That's right. So, support your local library. Have a good September. Bye! Smooch. Yes.